What's going on, guys? Romer the Romer here. I'm here with my mentor, Kayla Broth. This episode is sponsored by Scout IQ. And I'm not sponsoring this. I'm just wearing a shirt. Uh, you can Venmo me $50 after this. Perfect. Actually, Franklin Media said they were going to sponsor it, so they can. They they, can some, hey, uh, all three can sponsor it. How about that? Sounds great. All right. So I wanted to bring you on today just because I was probably going to call you and ask you about all this stuff and have like, you know, 30 minute conversation with you, but I'd rather just do this on YouTube and share it with everyone. Um, what do you think people should be doing right now? We're, we can't send shipments to Amazon for those of you that don't know until April 5th, they said. And I think that date, I think that date might get extended farther because who knows what's going to happen. Um, and so, yeah, we can't even create F and SKU labels. So all, all us FBA sellers can't make FBA shipments. So what would you be doing right now? What are you doing? Awesome. Yeah, back up just a second for those watching this, not today, maybe a couple of days down the road. This is a coronavirus quarantine day number two. So we are in quarantine. I mean, not officially. There's no martial law or anything declared. San Francisco it is. Uh, there are certain cities that are doing stuff. Ohio. I mean, Colorado shut down all the restaurants for the next eight weeks. I quarantined um, Rakin in his room. Say it again. I quarantined Rakin in his room. He's, he's probably smart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> throw, the, throw the key away. No, it's uh, it's it's tough times from that standpoint. We've been traveling a lot and. Uh, I had flown into Phoenix for our annual boys trip uh, a couple days back and we were down there and we just saw everything getting canceled. All the, uh, I'm a big college basketball fan, but all the conference championships, they canceled the NCAA, the NBA got, I mean, literally every sports thing got canceled and it's just reruns, which sports reruns are surprisingly not that much fun. We already know who wins. Um, so that's kind of where we are. This is now Tuesday, uh, March 17. Is it St. Patrick's day? I don't know. It's Fritz's birthday. That's that's all I know. Is it St. Patrick's Day today? Uh, yeah, quarantine. I'm usually on spring break at this time. I get drunk out of my mind. This is my first year, actually second year. I, I did spring break last year, even though I was wasn't. Yeah, it's March 17. There you go. It's St. Patty's Day. I'm wearing green. I don't know if where your green is, but uh, uh oh, I'm not. We're we're doing well. All right, so we're we're day two. We woke up to some interesting news. I had a friend text me this morning and. There it is. I had a friend text me this morning and say, you see the news, like first thing out of bed, I'm still rubbing sleepies out of my eyes, pull my phone up. And I just like looked to my news and I quickly saw that Tom Brady said he wasn't coming back to the Patriots. And I, I was like, oh, ha ha, good one. Yeah, Tom Brady's leaving. We kind of already knew that was going to happen. And he's like, no, man, did you see the real news? And I pulled up Facebook and everybody's freaking out because uh, we can't send FBA shipments in. So that's that's our new reality as of today, the 17th. We had just finished a pallet and a bunch of individual boxes yesterday. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we can still ship those in. So okay. lucky us. So if you uh, made an Amazon FBA shipment, you can before still Before today, you can still send it in. So get everything out that you have. We'll talk through what you can do here as, uh, as we go into a couple weeks of nothing. I kind of, I, I thought he was in his room. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's spreading the corona everywhere. I kind of expected Amazon to... Um, eventually shut down inbound shipping. I know that Powell's is not taking donations. A lot of thrift stores aren't taking them we right can, now. We can't it shut down till April 1st, at least. The, the entire store or just donations? The entire store. Yeah, In, so I believe. I, I kind of expected that probably, I, I didn't know if the virus can live on books or cardboard or if that was part of the reason. Um, the reason they're- on cardboard for 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. The uh, I won't I won't pretend to be an expert when it comes to the medical side of the virus, but um, the reason Amazon is stating is they're actually hiring a hundred thousand workers right now, temporary workers, um, to help fulfill orders. Because if you're not going out and buying groceries, you're going to be buying them online. You're going to be buying equipment, toilet paper, although it's pretty much all sold out. Um, that's such a weird. I, I know Reezy just showed some videos of in a grocery store. We we're down in Phoenix and even here. Like you go through the grocery store and there's some psychological thing about seeing groceries everywhere. You go, eh, it's safe. Everything's fine. Like even down in, in Phoenix, they still had bread on all the shelves, milk. Nothing yeah. was completely sold out. And then you walk around the corner and the entire, I have pictures of it, the entire like corner of the store is empty shelves. And it's just something psychologically goes, wait, I missed out. Something yeah. big yeah. sale. 
you know, I, you know, I have a theory about that with, with library sales. Everybody at library sales goes psycho. And then there's the people that are just like the poor people that are there that don't really know what's going on. And their heart rate starts going up for no reason. And they're like, I got to get more books. Like, I guarantee you, if we did a study psychologically, us booksellers make people buy more books frantically because we're oh, just, yeah. we're freaking out going like this. The other person's like, what do I do? I got, I got to grab some and put them in, in my box. And uh, I went to a library sale in New Jersey and the first time everyone was going crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this many booksellers before. And then I realized none of them were scanning. They were all just like regular people. The booksellers just make other people crazy. Well, it's, it's herd mentality and uh, it's, it's follow that. And so it's just weird seeing it, you know, basic things being stocked out. We went and got some more groceries today because I think it's going to be for, you know, six to eight weeks until things are even back to a semblance of normal. It's just a guess. And so we're kind of getting some of the essentials, making sure that we don't have to leave the house as much as we can. And, uh, you know, milk's getting run low. There's a lot of things that are starting to run low. Um, Yeah, there's just a weird psychological element to it. Yeah. So that's what Amazon's stating is they want to clear the shelves. They want to make sure that they're prioritizing inbound inbound shipments of uh, like medical supplies, household goods and in demand items, which would be like a lot of groceries and just, you know, typical supplies. So that's their reason, which I get. I understand you got to you know make some uh, sacrifices to make sure that, uh, you know, they're going to be providing a core element of delivery into the ecosystem when Walmart's shutting hours, when a lot of stores are, are shutting down. Um, so I get it, but yeah, that's uh, it's a big knife into people that sell FBA, which is pretty much everything that we do and everything that we teach. It, there's so much benefit to FBA, and we're gonna kind of live without it for at least two and a half weeks. Yeah. So what, what would you recommend people do? Uh, let's hear your thoughts first. Curious what uh, I put a bunch of thoughts on Facebook, and I'm gotcha. kind of curious what you guys are doing during, um, during this downtime. Well, since I run restrictedinventory.com, we, we just implemented this system where when we list people's books, they immediately get notified that night. Um, we pull the Excel list batch data. So everything still has to be on Excel list. So that was one of our rules. Everything still had to be on Excel list because we were toying with the idea of using your spreadsheet. And then because your spreadsheet is compatible, obviously, with the tracking spreadsheet. Uh, Caleb has yeah, my listing list, spreadsheet, correct. Listing spreadsheet and it's free. And we're like, all right, let's just use this. But then I'd have to train my listers, which wouldn't take too long. But you have to click on each link and make sure that they not two of them. the right ASIN. And I was yep. like, I was literally about to make a manual for that. And I was like, wait, um, I called Travis up because I heard something. I remember we used to use bulk on uh, Accelerolist version one. And I was like, OK, that's not actually asking Amazon for an F and SKU. So we could probably use that. And he was like, yeah, I, I don't want you know, you telling everyone to do that slash, I don't want you guys doing it because I, something weird about uh, him having access to some of the code or something like that. And so he, he didn't want us going back to V1. And he said, you can make a merchant fulfilled batch. So what we're doing is we're making MF batches. We're still using the one box method. So we're packing a box of books MF, and then we're not closing the batch, but we're setting the box aside. And hopefully like our full-time list is probably going to have like, I don't know, like 40 or 50 boxes when this is all over. Um, She's going to have the batch name written on each box. She can go back through and pull the inventory loader file and upload it to Amazon and make individual uh, shipments that way. We'll probably pay Amazon to label the books, which is like 30 cents now, which is ridiculous. It honestly be worth our, like our time uh, as a business to pay the listers to uh, go through and pull the books out and label them. But I just don't want to put them through that. And, with more and more shipments coming from restrictedinventory.com, it's like the most important thing is to get books listed fast. So that's what we're doing. Yep. So you're just trying to keep doing the same business and just keep listing and wait for the restriction to get listed before you send it in. Worst case, like if this gets pushed down, like if this, if this happens two months, like two months, they won't even open up the gates for FBA shipments. We could theoretically, and maybe I should plan for this. We could, we could accept all the batches and list everything merchant fulfilled. I could train my team how to send books merchant fulfilled. But the thing is I would want, we probably should start working the the boxes into the SKUs somehow, but that's complicated because we work the source into the SKU. Yeah, you can kind of sort it out. So let's back up to a macro level from a 30,000 foot view or a a hundred thousand foot view, even above the earth. But um, it's a rough time right now. 
if you're you know still healthy stay healthy be safe you know follow the uh, the instructions i think we're going to see a lot of cities clamp down impose curfews etc and uh, what they're saying is you know flatten the curve but essentially limit the connections that everybody has I've been on the road a lot myself, and if I was going to come in contact with it, I probably already did. And you so, probably it, spread it to everybody in America. Uh, yeah, we've done a lot of meetups, and, and uh, I'm sorry if that's the case, but uh, so far so good. I actually had a a pretty, I wouldn't say it wasn't that bad, but a pretty weird, you know, aches and fever and uh, really sore throat. Lungs were hurting quite a bit. Did it lasted for about a. You, you go to the doctor at all? You get tested. No, and this was this was probably six weeks ago, five weeks ago before anything was really even much in the news outside of Wuhan. And uh, a buddy of mine on our trip had the same thing about a month ago after he got back from New York. So it, it's possible that was it. I have no way of knowing. Um, yeah. I'm less concerned for myself and more concerned for people that I come into contact with that maybe couldn't handle it as well. Yeah. So it's selfishly, I want to get out. I don't like being cooped up at home. I want to go, you know, play golf and do my business and work with our vendors and, and, and network and everything. But uh, you got to start thinking about other people. So from an overall perspective, the stock market's tanking, you know, went from almost 30,000 down to 20,000 and it'll probably keep going. We don't know yet, but I don't see this what turning around in the next. I don't even, I don't even like raken has been talking about it. I don't even know like what's is 10,000 points a lot. Is that like great depression bad? Well, so when the economy tanked back in 07, 08, it dropped 50% of its value. So we're now dropped a third of our value, 30% roughly. So it's a so big drop. Is it an important thing or is the number of points? It's percentage. So if you have a hundred grand in your retirement account and you lose 50%, you know, eight, 10 years ago, whenever that was 12 years ago, then that goes from a hundred grand to 50 grand overnight. Now it's paper money. It doesn't mean anything unless you're older and getting close to retirement. Um, but now it's a 30 year value. So that hundred grand is now 67 grand and possibly still dropping. Gotcha. So for those that have money in retirement, especially if you're older and getting close to retirement and about to depend on that income, you just got a, a major kick in the groin. Yeah. So that, that, that hurts. It prevents them, you know, it does provide some opportunities for swing trading, day trading. It's very volatile, which can be dangerous. There can also be upside if you know what you're doing or if you get lucky. Um, but yeah, the market dropping and there's a lot of small businesses like imagine restaurants that operate off small margins that have a very low survival rate anyway. And now they're told to shut down for six to eight weeks and they can do drive through only. But that's if you have your employees, they're going to be laying a ton of people off. I mean, it's, it's essentially and again, this is all just conjecture. I haven't lived through this, but it's essentially going to trigger the next recession that we have here in America. So it's going to be tough times and you just have to understand that. And first off, just be cognizant of other people and be healthy and be safe and follow. You know, I know that many of you are anti-government or in, into conspiracy theories, but stay away, follow the social distancing practices and uh, do your best to be safe and let this thing do what it's going to do and hopefully not, not prolong the spread of it. Outside of that, things are going to bounce back. Um, you know, so we're going to be setting aside some money and buying into the stock market. And because we run our own business, we can kind of front load or pick when we buy into the market throughout the year. So we're going to try and, you know, not necessarily time it. I'm not going to sell my own portfolio. I should have done that three weeks ago if I was going to, and then buy back in cheaper, but I didn't, you know, the average cost, this isn't going to be a, a, a financial planning session. We'll get into some Amazon stuff for those of you that are Amazon sellers, but High level view, we're going to bounce back. The, the economy is going to recover. It may, you know, we were due for a recession anyway, and this is probably just going to expedite that. Um, so it's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of businesses that struggle, a lot of people that struggle. You know, 75 to 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, regardless of pay level. And when uh, businesses right now, it looks like they're going to be covering two weeks as a rough rule of paid leave. And then probably after that, they're not going to be able to pay that. Airline industry is struggling. They're probably going to get a bailout from the federal government if they can approve it. So there's a lot of things in play here and it's going to be going to be ugly. What you do then during this time is you, yeah, you can freak out, but it's not going to change it. I can't control the virus. I can't control the macro environment. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a, a passage in the Bible that says, you know, which one of you, it's kind of a joke, but uh, it goes, which one of you by worrying can add like an inch to your height? But you can't change. There's certain things that are just that you're the same height you're going to be 
Avery, you're only going to get shorter from here as your spine compresses as you get to be an old man, right? I've been doing yoga, though, so I might get like a quarter inch before. I might, but uh, worrying or thinking about it extra is not going to change that fact, right? And that's the same thing here. So be careful, be safe, but you, you can sit there and worry yourself into a tizzy. It looks like the federal government, I don't know if this is good or bad, uh, is going to issue some sort of a bailout in the form of checks to probably every citizen. And they're talking about throwing $1,000 to everybody as a way to kind of help with rent and expenses and mortgages and not being with, you know, without a job, that kind of thing. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It looks like it might get support from both parties and that could be a little bit of a, a bailout instead of bailing out the airline industry, which they'll probably do, they might bail out the American people. So there might be some relief coming that way, but the reality is you, you need to step back and say, all right, like this sucks, we're in this position, let's be smart about it. Um, for me, it's a chance to step back and, and like, I, I'll just be blunt, like Scout IQ is going to struggle. People aren't going to be able to go s source. Um, eFlip might grow a little bit because people do online arbitrage, although you need cash to do eFlip. And if, if times are tight, cash may not be prevalent. So our software business is going to struggle. Our Amazon business, we can't list right now. So I'll, I'll talk through some of the things that you can do, give some practical tips here in just a minute. But our Amazon business, whatever is in, is in. Whatever is not in, we got to wait until at least April 5th at this point. Uh, most of our Amazon business is consignment. And our big contracts and our big players are with libraries and colleges, both of which are no longer operating right now. And uh, it seems like most of the colleges will probably not pick back up until the fall. And so we're not going to be getting new inventory. Our libraries are going to be closed until this thing blows through. And so most of our business is at high risk. And you can say, hey, it's, 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 you know, it sucks to rely all on Amazon and to rely on one person. It does. And, uh, you know, nobody foresaw this coming. This is what they call a black swan event. And so our business is going to struggle. We're OK. We've we've saved up in the in the good years that we've had for the last 12 years. And uh, I mean, I was in college back then. I didn't have money, but we've saved up over the last couple of years and we're going to be OK. We want to try and help other people and other businesses and make sure people stay afloat as much as possible. And uh, again, the people that live paycheck to paycheck, it's it, this is going to be very, very difficult to pull two to six to eight weeks of, you know, not doing much of anything. So that's the that's the macro level. We're going to bounce back. The country always does. The economy always does. It just is going to be ugly. So if you have some cash and you can afford to sit and wait, this is a great opportunity to um, learn some new skills. Teach yourself how to code. Teach yourself how to play the guitar. Don't just waste your time watching Netflix. If you're at home, read, listen to podcasts, try and improve your life. For us, you know, it's a chance for us to to build some stations for uh, listing books more efficiently. It's a chance to look at our systems. It's a chance to go back and uh, finalize all of our accounting. Chris will probably watch this video. You know, so he, he's going to be on me to, to get my books in order. So this is a chance to clean your business up. Do some we have no excuses to anymore for Chris. Now we have to get our books in order for him. Exactly. So, and it looks like the IRS is going to allow everybody to delay filing federally as well. So instead of uh, April 15, it looks like they're going to push that back even as well. There's no interest on student loans right now. There's a lot, a lot of banks are waiving fees, doing things to kind of uh, just encourage people to, uh, again, most people live paycheck to paycheck. So one small interruption, regardless of if you make two, 20 grand a, a year or 200 grand a year can potentially throw you off your game. Are the banks doing that? for their own good, like to keep customers, or are they being pushed by the government? I'm not sure. It is a regulated industry. Um, they used to run somewhat rampant and they still have been uh, recently. Banks are, are good, they're vital to the society, but they also can be a problem at times. Um, I think it's probably partly for their own interests. I don't know if the government's pushing that just yet. Uh, you gotta figure, hey, if a customer goes bankrupt and defaults on a car loan or a house loan, that that's not good for the bank. And so if they can kind of delay that, and even if that hurts them in the short term, if it keeps people still paying, it's probably the right move. So, you know, businesses do what's in their own best interest as a general rule. And so uh, banks are probably no different from that. But it also is just kind of the right thing to do because people are going to be in a, between a rock and a hard place. And that allows them to continue, to continue going. Uh, Italy, I think, maybe Spain, I think Italy uh, waived a month's worth of mortgages. So that's kind of how they gave back to the economy. I don't know if that applies to rent then, if that's supposed to trickle down from the landowner or the building owner, um, but they're waiving a month. I don't know if it's getting pushed and just they don't have to pay it, but it eventually will get paid just a month later. 
but they're that's how they're kind of incentivizing their economy to keep going i know you said you, you don't know much about the coronavirus but in italy do you know if they like plateaued yet or are they still increasing because i know people are talking about like a climax that's going to hit like peak number of cases do you know how italy's done and we can kind of guess how the United States is going to do based off that. Have you, have you been following that at all? Uh, the best thing I can do, can I share a link in this? I'm, I'm not familiar with this. Um, can you see anything on the stream? I can see just you and me side by side, but there's like a chat box do you over see here. see the comments? There's some, oh, I, I guess I've been looking at the uh, private chat. I haven't been looking at live comments, but you I can probably comment a, a link or if you send me the link, I can uh, put it in the description. Let me pull it up here. So there's a there's a couple things here. I love. I'm just going to give a plug. I don't, I don't. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. But visualcapitalists.com just has some really fascinating stuff on business and economics, and just they have a great way of of uh, charting things. So they've charted this by each country, and they've shown the uh, essentially the infection rate, and they show it on a curve. So the steeper the curve, the more it goes up. I could probably just share my screen, right? um yeah click on share screen at the bottom you see that yeah so let me just do this once all right so can you see that uh, i see the option to add it let me format this correctly um let's do see what happens here oh boom got it let me make it there we go i'm going to share the link on the um visualcapital.com is it just that visualcapitalists.com but what they do is they've mapped out the uh, infection rate here and they the steeper the curve so what they're talking about is as things become exponential if one becomes two becomes four becomes eight then things double quickly so the population that's infected doubles every two days so you can see this steep line here and they map out all the individual countries so you can see china's is flattened so this is cases this is logarithmic type scale so it's exponential um, but you can see the number of cases has essentially leveled out if we can trust the data coming out of China. Okay. Before it was doubling every two days, which is that's scary, especially as it grows. As it goes to the right, it starts to then double every three days or five days, or you know, so they're they're less than doubling every five days, which means it's slowing. That curve is flattening. If you want to look at the US here, let's see what we got. That's Japan. They're on the down men. France is still growing quite a bit. South Korea has flattened. They're doing you said a lot J of Japan's going down. Uh, it's not going down yet, but it's flattening. Mm, okay. So we'd like to see this go down, but right now it's at least not going up as fast as it was. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. So Korea is doing a lot of testing. Italy is still rapidly growing. They're doubling every two and a half days, give or take. There's Iran. There's China. U.S. has to be in here somewhere. Let's dig that one up. There it is. So we're flattening right now, and that's in the last couple of days. I don't know when this chart that's was. That's interesting. Uh, that's a U.S. has a weird one. Yeah. So again, we want what they're talking about is flattening the curve because it's going to infect a ton of people. It's it's uh, exponential because it's got a vesting period of ten to fourteen days, which means you don't know you have it, and everybody you come into contact with is is hurting. Yeah. So that's why everything's canceled. But this site kind of explains it. They get super nerdy, which I like, but um, I, I probably trust the data that comes from this just with their their. Um, experience in general i just commented so, it and then i'm going to add it a after this video is over in the bio cool but I, i'm not going to pretend to be an expert in coronavirus or infectious diseases that's just not my cup of tea i'll stop sharing the screen here as well but um let's see here there we go so that's that's what's going on we're going to find out in the next week or two hopefully people here with all the businesses shutting down they actually shut down golf courses in pennsylvania that may happen in colorado as well i don't know um which is a bummer bummer for me i think that's one of the best sports you can do from a social distancing standpoint you don't have to yeah. really contact with people I wonder how long it can live on golf balls for i have no idea but uh, let's get back to the Amazon side of things and we can answer some questions. But um, again, very fluid situation. Um, you can get super worked up and negative over this or you can say, hey, you know, this is not great. And, you know, I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it and say it's a, it's, it's a good thing. But there's ways that you can make uh, make the most of this. If you're stuck at home for a while, again, invest in yourself. Find some ways to um, work on a skill that you've been wanting to learn. Like for me, it might be programming. I was messing around today. 
might be learning to play an instrument or, you know, improving yourself by reading books or learning the Wim Hof method or whatever else. Have so, you tried that? I've not tried it yet. David tried it and he said it was awesome. I, uh, I, I showed up to Atlanta just after you guys had, had wrapped up. So I missed that. <laughs> uh, what he's talking about is at the turn the page meetup in Atlanta, uh, me, Matthew Osborne, Rakin, and some other person that we roped in there. Uh, well, I think then, Diane walked in on y'all. Diane with walked in. We're, we're all short of this. And the Wim Hof method's like this. This is what you do. You go, you breathe super hard and you do that for like 30 breaths. And then you hold your breath for like two minutes. And Matthew is from Denver, Colorado, where he lives there, which is what's the elevation there? Mile high? It's mile high. It's about 5,000 feet. Yeah. So he, he was like hyper oxygenated and he was able to hold his breath like twice as long as me and Rake. And I think he held his breath for like, at least three minutes. It was something crazy. But Diane walks out. And we're all just laying on the ground. And she's like, what the hell is going on here? So if exactly. you guys want to check out the Wim Hof method, I'll also link that in the description afterwards. But you might, you might, you might want to be careful doing that because you're breathing a lot more air. I'll, uh, we'll check it out. But uh, so you got, you got to assess where you're at. Um, again, don't be those guys that stock up. I think everybody's seen the uh, New York Times article at this point about the brothers that went out and were buying up hand sanitizer and masks and a bunch of that stuff and trying to flip it. Yeah. And uh, I think they walked into a trap. I think New York Times said, hey, we want to interview you because you lost your Amazon account. And they said, sure, we'd love to you know, point the finger at Amazon and say how evil they are. And they ended up just uh, <laughs> inculcating themselves or implicating themselves for uh, taking advantage of a tragedy, essentially. Yeah. So, to their credit, I, you know, I feel bad for them. They've had death threats and people knocking on their door in the middle of the night. And I know they donated all the sanitizer and uh, I think they're trying to do the right thing at this point. It, it brings up an interesting ethical situation because there's books now, for example, anytime there's a tragedy, there's books that sell really well. When, yeah. Kobe, when Kobe passed away, his book became the number one sales rank on I Amazon. I think it's a matter of what value are you adding like it's what value you're adding, and it's also not taking advantage of a tragedy for your own good. Yeah. So, and it's it's a weird line. So for us, like the Eyes of Darkness, the Dean Koontz book is selling for eighty to one hundred fifty bucks on Amazon. We just came across another book, so we've sold that. We've taken advantage of that price bump, right? But it's not it's not an essential staple for living. It's not that we're charging extra for food. We're charging for a book, and if someone mm -hmm. wants to pay it, yay! It's no different than uh, charging for a textbook that a student needs. Right? right. You can get your fair value out of it. It's different when you go to the store and buy up a ton of, you know, all of the hand sanitizer. So instead of a community each getting a little bit, you know, somebody goes in and buys it all up, whether it's stocking it for their own house or selling it on Amazon. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's it's like it's the, that's like the extreme level of why people don't like resellers, because what people always bash resellers for is you're going out, you're taking the best stuff and you're flipping it for a value that people didn't know how much it was worth on the shelves. And you're taking it and you're flipping it for more. This is like an extreme version of that. Well, and, and you think about the retail arbitrage. So people that go around at Christmas and whatever the hot toy is, whether it's the Monopoly for Millennials or Pie in the Face or, you know, every year has its own different, you know, hot toy that you can make three times your money. I don't think it's any different than that. When you go to a Walmart and buy up, you know, three cartfuls of the same game and you buy them out of stock and you tell your friends to do the same thing and then you sell it back on Amazon or some other marketplace, you're kind of depriving a local population of that toy, of, of that good. And uh, a single mother with three kids that doesn't make a lot of money or, or anybody that doesn't make a lot of money that was gonna buy that toy at the store now can't and has to pay three or four times that value online. Mm -hmm. You could argue about the ethics of that as well. And that's, that's not what we're here to do, but it's an interesting side note. Yeah. Um, booksellers, we're not really doing that. Uh, Probably the weirdest we ever get or the most uh, uh, shark in the water type mentality is at book sales and we go crazy. Yeah. And, and things you can do is remember that if someone's there to buy it for themselves, we, we always tried to do that when we were hitting up the library sales is, hey, you know, as we're bouncing around and trying to you know go crazy and scan books as quickly as possible. Hey, if you're buying this for yourself, if you see anything you want, just holler. Even in my cart, pick it out. It's yours. I like, like that. Be, I didn't know be you nice. That. That's. We're, we're providing value in the form of we're finding this book, this niche book somewhere that someone online doesn't want to go try and hit eight library sales and three thrift stores to try and find it. They just want to pay a premium and, and get the book. That's yeah. the value we provide. We connect a buyer to a good. 
Um, but when you go in and buy up the entire stock of something, you could argue that that is now changing the model. And 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 we're again, we're not here to talk about ethics, but um, be cognizant of what of what the times do. There is opportunity. Amazon's going to be stocking out of a lot of goods right now, and there's a chance to fill that pipeline, but do so in a meaningful way. Right. All right, we got some questions coming in. Let's let's mess around with this new software. Let's, Rover, um, Caleb, what's up, guys? What, what were you about to say? That's cool. I was going to say, I'm, I want to jump into just a few other things just okay. for Amazon related. Yeah, yeah. So assess where you're at. If you really need the money coming in, if money's really tight, uh, right now we're blocked from listing FBA. You're probably somewhat blocked from going to thrift stores because we're not really supposed to be out and about. A lot of thrift stores are closed right now or they're not accepting donations. So there's not fresh inventory. Libraries are closed. Library sales are canceled. So it's tough to find inventory. So if you can't feed the beast, if you can't fill the top of the funnel with new inventory, if you want to be safe and stay inside, then what options do you have? One is if you've already stocked up, you can then go ahead and list merchant fulfilled. And we're going to be doing, Matthew and I will be doing a couple of videos in the next day or two to try and show you how to, how to do that. So merchant fulfilled is great. You can list it. You can get sell it same day. You don't get the prime bump that we talk about quite a bit. Looks like your camera focused on your, uh, the wall or something. I don't know. It'll get it. It'll get it. Um, so merchant fulfilled is something you should learn and understand how to ship the orders yourselves. Uh, I had a UPS rep call me today. They were trying, obviously their business is struggling. So they're trying to get my business. Uh, we switched to FedEx. And so they're trying to claw back at us, which, Hey, great. We'll see if we can pit them against each other. Um, I guess Avery's just blurry now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And he's back. Know. His webcam's messing up. I'm not unplugging, plug it back in. You can keep talking. All right. So uh, you've got a couple options. One, you got to try and figure out how to source inventory still if you can that's somewhat safe. So use Facebook Marketplace, use Craigslist, find some auctions locally. See if you can find books outside of thrift stores and just, you know, if you're hungry, hey, he's back. <laughs> if you're hungry, you'll be creative and figure out ways to get inventory. The other thing you can be doing then is listing merchant fulfilled. And I know that that kind of goes against, you know, a lot of uh, what we want to be doing because FBA provides such a great option. We've canceled all of our travel for the next couple of weeks and we'll kind of wait and monitor and see what happens. So merchant fulfilled will play a role for us, if not just to teach you guys how to do it, but also just so we can keep some revenue coming in. So that's something you can be doing. And then, like we mentioned before, uh, work on ways to improve your workflow, in, improve your setup, clean up your uh, your warehouse, work on your dud pile, list stuff on eBay. Uh, don't just sit around and do nothing. Take advantage of this time to step back and, and improve some things. The other piece you can do is really work on your repricing. Repricing is, is a bear. It's difficult. There's not a perfect way to reprice. You're going to price too high or too low or not enough or too much there's really a weird balance that comes into play. And so take the advantage of this time since you can't list new items, reprice what's already there, try and stay competitive and see if you can sell as much as you can. So those are those are kind of the things that you can do. And again, if you don't need money, if you've been smart and saved up for a, a time of, of trouble, then awesome. Take advantage of this time and better yourself. Uh, work out, work on pushups, run around your neighborhood, go for a bike ride. You know, do some things to improve your system, because if you just sit around and worry, you're just going to be unhealthy and that's not going to set you up for success. Yeah. So 100%. cool. Great. Um, real quick question about the merchant fulfilled. I know you're probably going to go over this in your videos with Matthew, but uh, what's what's your pricing strategy with that? So FBA you typically target the buy box or, you know, I, I like to say the lowest five prime prices. Merchant fulfilled pricing plays much more of a role, a little bit seller rating, a little bit condition. Merchant fulfilled sellers cannot get the buy box as a rule unless there are no prime sellers on the listing. So that's not what you want to target. You basically want to look at the lowest merchant fulfilled sellers and target those. Okay. Um, price is much bigger. The good thing is though, we can, the API uh, lets mm -hmm. us see the lowest 15 offers. So we, if we do set up reprice it or some other software, uh, we could actually have it be smart enough. Accelerolist doesn't let you like choose like second or third merchant offer. Does they, it? they don't. You can set up Scout IQ to uh, look at merchant fulfilled prices. You can plug in your outbound shipping rates um, and just getting comfortable with that. One thing I recommend for merchant fulfilling and you can list through Seller Central. You can list with Accelerolist. You can list however you want to list. 
Um, Excel or list will be nice for the listing spreadsheet because you can then take that data back into the tracking spreadsheet. Go out if you can or buy it on Amazon, get a roll of raffle tickets. You know, the, the ones that you tear off and they each have one, they're, they increment by one number. Yeah. So it'll be five or six digits typically on there. What you do, do with that is whatever that five or six digit number is, let's say it's 10,001, you're gonna put that as your SKU when you list that on Amazon, whether through Acceler List or directly through Seller Central, okay. that's your SKU. Then tear off a ticket. I got random books here, David Ledbetter, How to Golf Better. But tear off a ticket, tuck it in the, in the top of the pages. So just open the book a little bit, tuck the ticket in the top, leave it out so you can see the number poking right out here on the spine and put that on your shelf in that order. So as a book sells, instead of going, shoot, where's David Ledbetter golf and trying to read the spines among, you know, a thousand other books, you can then use the tickets as your poor man's version of where that book is. So start 10,001 on the top left, work your way over, down, over, down, over, however you want to do it. Um, but, but that's a really good way. It, again, a poor man's version of a ticketing system. I'm not sure if Excel list has one just yet. I know ScanLister has a merchant fulfilled ticketing system where you can assign it row one, shelf two, uh, you know, bay three. So you, you can make a Excel list because you could, you could, if you're not like meticulous with the source or scout settings, those are places where you could put box one or shelf one or ticket right. 1001, something like that. Yeah. So a poor man's version of that is simply to use a, a raffle ticket type system and that's your order. And then as stuff sells, close the gaps, move stuff up and then fill in more areas. So you can merchant fulfill. Again, we're kind of on a hiatus until at least April 5th. So if you do need to keep books selling, that's, you know, repricing is probably the best thing you can do, followed by continuing to feed the beast and lists, uh, list merchant fulfilled. You can always then transfer your merchant fulfilled items to FBA later or simply close the listings and relist once the time is up. So that's, that's kind of where you're at if you need to keep cash flow coming in. Um, I know many of you, and I feel for you, if we can help, by all means, reach out. We'd, we'd love to help where we can, but many of you are going to be without work for a bit. You may not, you know, maybe uh, unpaid absence. So there's going to be some chances there as well. <laughs> I'm drinking, uh, Kreider has, uh, he really been pushing Screwball. It's a peanut butter whiskey. So uh, Avery, once you're done with your no drinking challenge for what, six months, three months? Six months. So we got. Well, I'll, I'll get you a bottle of this. It's really, really tasty. Last bottle you got me, Caleb got me a bottle, a Costco bottle of liquor in Chicago, and uh, almost turned me into alcoholic. I couldn't. I finished like <laughs> that much of it. <laughs> well, I remember you poured the rest of it out. I did, yeah, I poured the rest of it out for sober October because like I was just like I don't know. My Amazon account got shut down, and I saw the bottle of liquor, and I was like, nope, I'm doing sober October right now. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I like it. Hey, Caleb, for the listing spreadsheet, can the SKU be customized? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, the way it's set up now is cost as good as last number. I'd rather have it be. Can you move around the, the SKU? Yeah, you can move stuff around. We've got a listing spreadsheet pro, which kind of allows you to customize the SKU. Or if you're somewhat decent at Excel, you can customize it. Putting the rank in there is going to be a little different. I think by default, the listing sheet is source, date listed, uh, buy cost, and item number. So I think those are the items, but you can definitely change that as well. Daddy Rome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Katrina, she's asking, what can we do about our IPI score when we can't send new inventory and our inventory is getting stale? How can we prevent it from continually dropping? Katrina from Chicago. She's been out to uh, Colorado as well. Yeah, she, she came, came to Nashville. Out. She came and saw the headquarters, which is awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, if your IP I score is below, what is it, 350, I think, is where you can't send in new items. You don't have unlimited storage. Uh, you got to try and get that up. So it's going to be basically, there's a lot of things that play into it. You can look it up on Seller Central. But the main metric, at least the one that we've learned on our own and talked to other people, is sell-through rate. So you can delete old listings that'll help marginally, but maybe not even at all. It's going to be sell through rate. So list better rank stuff, try and get that number to go up. It was dropping for everybody in Q4, uh, especially booksellers, because we just don't sell as much as like toy sellers, for example, or shoe sellers. And uh, Amazon eventually kind of changed the algorithm because we were getting hammered. So uh, try and sell more items, sell stuff more FBA that's uh, uh, better ranked. 
And if you have some longer tail stuff, maybe you go merchant fulfilled with that just to try and help your metrics. Louis coming in playing devil's advocate. Why resell? Let's sell everything at 10% above cost to cover our costs. <laughs> we don't resell not to make money. Yeah, that's, we're that's all in it. The ethics make... come in about what are you reselling? Are you reselling an essential item to survive during a crisis? Or are you just flipping a textbook at a library sale? Those are two different things. Well, and it's interesting because everything has its season, right? No matter if you're selling cows or chickens or eggs or gold or books, everything has its season. And there's going to be periods of time where you can make money because people need that good, for example. It's somewhat different. If I have a book in my uh, inventory already, I'm just sitting on it, and all of a sudden this book becomes popular, right? Books are different because most of everything we have is one-offs. So we're not buying up the available supply. We're not going into a store and filling a cart arbitrarily with just a thousand of one item and then going home and selling that. What we've done there is, yeah, we've helped someone in Alaska get that good but we've deprived the local community of access to it. And it, it just doesn't feel right too when it's a tragedy yeah, or when, it, when it's something that's going on. So if we already had a closet full of toilet paper because we shop at Goodwill normally, and all of a sudden the supply just disappears because China's not taking paper because everybody's buying toilet paper for whatever reason. Sure, if someone wants to buy it and pay a premium, that's somewhat fine. That's supply and demand. That's economics 101. The problem is if you're the one going out and buying all of that and depriving your community of it to try and make a buck, it becomes difficult. And people like, you know, if you try and go to a garage sale and someone sees that you're going to resell their items, they get angry at you. Some some part of human nature doesn't like that someone's making money off you. Yeah. Right. If there's information asymmetry or something going on there. They feel stupid, and so that, I think, because they're like, why didn't I know it was worth this much? Or why, why do I not know how to sell it? Like, and because you know that and because you have – scout iq or tools to tell you it's worth more than what they're charging you get to be you, you're bringing value to the marketplace you're connecting a buyer that wants that book with that book so there's value there it becomes somewhat of a gray area when you're scooping up other products now again someone that lives at home that doesn't want to go out because they're um, immune immunocompromised and can't go out to the store and they can go on amazon and buy it because you bought it and sold it like what's a fair profit you know, if you buy a shot of alcohol at the at the local bar, they've got 80 percent margins on that or more. It's like insane. Is that fair? Is that right? Should should we limit the number, the amount of money someone can make? It becomes a really gray area. In general, I lean toward free market, laissez faire, let the market do what it wants to do. But insane times and desperate times call for desperate measures. So, so our, that's our a good bar question, Louis. I don't I don't have a great answer. I don't know if there's a ethical profit level that makes sense if you can find something that makes five thousand percent roi heck yeah go for it yeah uh, competition may show up and drive those profit margins down and it does just feel differently when there is a tragedy or some urgent situation going on poop poop smear <laughs> g china thanks for wrecking the world nice name your mom <laughs> your mother must love you <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's y'all's refer, uh, preferred repricer for books? My current repricer is not geared towards books. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're using. Um, you want to find something that reprices consistently, regularly, and targets the buy box, ideally. Uh, you also want something that takes profits into account because this book is small and light. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's a small paperback. It might weigh uh, you know half a pound. And this book, the fees on it are way lower than... You know, a heavy book like this one, hardcover, it probably weighs a pound and a half. And this book is different than this book in terms of fees. So this book I could sell for 12 bucks and make $4 profit. This I could sell for 10 bucks and make $4 profit. So you want something that's profit-based, uh, ideally. Um, new price, shameless plug for Matthew's products, but uh, new price is something you can use. It's manual. Uh, reprice it's kind of the go-to for books but again with the amazon limitations and the api limitations there's some uh, there's some difficult times there as well so new price is something you can look at if you're fine manually going through you're going to get better data than other apps will provide because it's loading it on your computer um, other apps that uh, I, mean, I don't know what you're using avery we use new price for 60 days and then reprice it after that so as long as you understand what the limitations are of the repricers in that they can't, they can only see the lowest 15 offers. Um, most of them don't take profit into account. If 
you understand that, you can work around those and be smarter with it. But just make what sure you, you know what you do about books that are older. They're about to incur long term storage fees. And for you to reprice them, you would lose more money than disposing them. Do you have a good system in place to dispose the book? Yeah. So the long term storage fees now get charged every month. And so what? Sorry, I'm chewing on my ice cube here, but you're good. Um, what you want to do is look at those it's, and say, uh, hey, we should title, we should put tags in here. What, what, what's that uh, YouTube channel called where they have like weird noises that you listen to? Like uh, people like pulling roots out of the ground. Uh, it, no, I don't even know. I don't even want to say it. I don't know. But it's like weird noises, but that's what it reminded me of. Nice. Um, <laughs> what were we asking? Uh, about long-term storage fees that they come every month. Yeah, so you're going to be charged a monthly fee based on the weight or the dimensions of the item, how much storage space it takes up. And your cost to dispose of it and remove it are now the same. It used to be 15 cents to dispose of it, 50 cents to have it shipped back to you. Now it's basically 35 cents plus or minus a little bit for weight. Um, so heavier books, textbooks are going to cost more to dispose or remove. It's the same price. If it's junk, you probably don't want it. You could remove it, send it to sell back your book if they're buying it. But real, realistically, now it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference to throw it away uh, or figure it out from there. Um, so do, do you have a good system to where it's like, yeah, we look at it. I wouldn't say we look at it every, you know, every month, but we try and look at every three months, give or take and look at what's old. And if a book is over a year, so we're starting to get hit with some extra fees, we look at the price. Do you, if do it's you do it via for, a spreadsheet or do you do it via Seller Central? Uh, I use the inventory health report and then kind of run some, gotcha. some magical stuff from there. That's but the really inventory good, that's a really good is your report. Friend. Yeah. It shows you what the fees are going to be and it shows you the age of your inventory. So mm -hmm. you can target stuff and over a year. Break to... You got everything in there. So it, learn some basic Excel skills. Use this time off if you're, you know, the next two weeks at least. Where can we learn basic Excel skills? Home. Learn some Excel skills. Look up on YouTube. Look, just Google some Excel classes. There's a ton of free content. There's some paid content as well if you want to support somebody. Um, but check out some Excel classes and teach yourself some basic skills. You don't need to rely on software to help you with that. But learn what we do is essentially roughly look at what's the age. If it's over a year, we start looking closer. We look at the rank and we look at the price and not our price, but the lowest merchant fulfilled price. That's kind of the market price. So on a book that's ranked 5 million, that's got a $10 merchant fulfilled price. We're disposing of it. I don't care if it sells. We're not going to make much money after fees. And I don't want to keep paying fees to maybe make $2 down the road. I'm going to dump it. Just take my losses and understand that I was wrong and move on. A book that's $5 million but $100, I'm going to let it ride and just keep trying because I don't mind paying $0.10 cents a month or $0.05 cents a month or whatever the long-term storage fees are for that particular book. I'll pay them because at some point, I'm going to get a nice payday. So we just have a rough rule. If you want to use our rough rule, it's basically 2 million rank. We need it to be two, $20 merchant fulfilled, 3 million rank, $30 merchant fulfilled, 4 million rank, $40, just a rough rule. And then if it's getting up 15, 16, 17 million and it hasn't sold in a year, it's probably time to, to say goodbye and pull it. Uh, Michael's coming in. It's called ASMR. <laughs> That's, That's what the, the YouTube site. Nice. Yeah. You should look at some videos. They're super weird. Um, <laughs> should we cancel our scout iq account it's up to you it depends on where you're at um you know we're trying to support we actually got a really cool email actually i'll read part of it uh we got a, just an amazing email today there's a lot of small businesses that aren't going to survive our costs are low if we have to set, set aside some developers in the short term we will we'll take care of them as much as we can um, but we're going to survive we're going to come on the other side of this and we know that our business is going to struggle um, this is someone that reached out. I won't say who it is because that's it's not fair to them, but I want to reach out, let you know I appreciate all the hard work you and the crew have been doing to provide us with Scout IQ. We recently had a baby and in the months leading up to maternity leave, we had enough income from Amazon to supplement my wife being on maternity leave. Scout IQ was the backbone of our ability to make that happen. With that being said, the current events have apparently affected Amazon. We can't send in shipments, which is what we're talking about. Not to mention here in whatever state they're in, they've gone berserk and closed just about everything. So sourcing is going to be tough, which that's kind of why you're asking the same question. I wanted to let you know that in the spirit of not being part of the problem, I will continue my Scout IQ subscription unchanged, regardless if I'm, char if I'm sourcing books or not. 
I also purchased your spreadsheet a while ago, which is a great asset. And have looked to your content since beginning the journey to get past the learning curve. We flattened their learning curve. How's that? Yeah. Now thank you for the spreadsheet. My bad. I forgot you off. Yeah. Thank you for being a great example of entrepreneurship. Thank you for all of your guidance to date. Just to be clear, do not pause, cancel, otherwise suspend my subscription or return any money. We're going to let it ride. Got it. Smiley face and then their name. That was awesome. So you know who you are. Uh, that stuff means the world to us. That's why we're that doing it. That was actually me that sent that email. You can go ahead and say it. It, it was not. <laughs> I don't think you're that eloquent, but uh, uh, it, that was awesome. I'm not an emotional guy, but it almost brought tears to my eyes when I saw that come through and shared that with our team today. Um, we're going to be fine. We, we save up for a rainy day. We know that you know what we have today is not going to survive necessarily tomorrow. There's no guarantee. And we're going to be just fine. We're going to keep developing and we're going to keep implementing. And if we enter, enter the other side of this virus in a recession, there's going to be a lot of you that are hungry to go out and grow your business. And we're going to be here for you. So it's our time to try and lead and help and be part of part of the uh, solution, not part of the problem. So I can't answer that for you. If you're not going to go scout and uh, you don't want to help keep supporting what we're doing with our development team, then by all means, cancel it, put it on hold come back as soon as you can get back out there and go again. Uh, we'll be doing some videos showing how to set up merchant fulfilled triggers. Most of our stuff is geared for FBA sellers, but we'll be teaching you how to do merchant fulfilled. You can list the books profitably uh, that you can make a profit on and keep, keep your business going. Someone said, as far as going out there, um, you know, would you recommend that I go out and try and find more books right now? It's up to you. It, it really depends. The more people you come into contact with, the more you're potentially risking them if you're already a carrier or the more you risk picking it up. So if you can uh, uh, avoid some human interaction, it, we're social creatures. Fortunately, we've got YouTube. We can be doing this and talking uh, on the internet here, but I, I don't know that I'd recommend getting out there and sourcing until we kind of see what goes on in the next Can week. it transmit electronically? I don't think so, but I, I'm like a couple feet from my computer and you're like three feet from yours. So we're don't, effectively six feet apart. Don't sneeze. <laughs> um someone asked about repricing merchant fulfill which we kind of talked about but i think this is like it's super exciting like because i'm i'm really excited just to go around go in and set some trigger or set uh repricing not triggers but templates yeah. for merchant fulfill because they're going to work so good because we can yeah. actually we can actually see like when it's so it real it, we realize how stupid it is to uh set templates for fba because we're working with like nothing basically like right? we're working with the buy box we're working with sometimes we can see well as fba most of the time we can't a bunch of weird stuff sometimes the api doesn't even let us you know see certain things but now with merchant fulfilled we can basically reprice it against the lowest five prices which is what we all only thing we care about yeah so fba we pretty much get the lowest we basically get the buy box we don't get a lot of offers amazon shows the lowest 15 offers most of the time there's no prime offers there or maybe just one and so if you're telling reprice it or you know, not to beat up on them, but any repricer, if you're saying, hey, I want to be the second lowest prime price, the repricer goes, cool, but Amazon only gave us one prime price. So uh, you go, hey, I want to avoid books in acceptable condition. Great. We only have one price to look at and it's acceptable. What do you want us to do? And there's not very clear rules for what to do when that happens. Merchant fulfilled, we have all kinds of data. We can look at feedback score. We can see the condition. We can see 15 offers, most of which are merchant fulfilled. We can make very good decisions, very informed decisions. Um, and who knows, maybe many of us are going to come out the other side going, wow, Merchant Fulfilled actually plays a good role. We're selling more than we were FBA. We can maybe sell on eBay and open up some additional channels. Um, one thing we didn't mention, and uh, you know, Bill's a good supporter of what, of what we're doing and what we're doing with Turn the Page and just great in the community. And I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention that. But Bill will sell back your book. Um, is running a great operation and he's you know their data is natively integrated in scout iq they've, they've rented some real estate if you want to call it that in scout iq and so they're still buying books if uh, if you can't send in to fba you could still send in to bill i don't think that's going to change as long as uh the post office is delivering mail i think they're going to keep accepting inventory so if cash flow is really tight you can merchant fulfilled or you can send a bill you can merchant full build how's that <laughs> So there's a, you know, there's a lot of things that you can be doing, but get creative, get hungry. Scout IQ has got built-in integration with uh, Book Scouter as well. So you can see if other companies 
are paying more. I know that some buyback companies are not accepting inventory right now. So make sure you do your research, but get creative. The, the most creative people I've seen and that I've, I've come into contact with are those that are the hungriest. And I know that's why Raken said he kind of envies you, Avery, is that that mentality of, hey, you're hungry, you're broke in some in some regards. You've got a lot of yeah. social equity, but you don't have a lot of money in the bank, right? Yeah. That forces you with your back against the wall to make different decisions, to get up every day and go grind. And that, that's not a dig. That's something that's really remarkable. And people that are willing to put the effort in are going to come out the other side. How many people try and sign up for multiple trials of Scott IQ? and get creative and share with their friends and turn on airplane mode and, and whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. On one hand, it's like, hey, that's frustrating. We, we've spent a lot of money to build out a tool. On the other hand, it's, wow, you guys are really, you're hungry. You're, you're grinding, you're hustling, you're following Gary V. You're, you're doing whatever it takes to get ahead. And I admire that and I tip my hat to that. Yeah. So just don't do it with us. Find some other app to mess around with. <laughs> I, think, I think most people are good people. And I do a lot of weird stuff like that, like where I'll buy a scanner and if, if it's broken or if I buy multiple of one scanner, like the, uh, the not a move. And if I ever get one that's broken, I'll take advantage of the system and I'll pack it in a box and I'll send it back to Amazon because I know Amazon's going to refund me for it. So I'm not returning the same scanner. I'm returning another one. I'll go to hotels and get free breakfast, free, free breakfast. And what, what happens is when I go to stay at a hotel, I'm like, which hotels give me free breakfast? I'm going to stay there. Cause now I'm actually going to be paying for it. So I think most people are good enough to like, hopefully like after they've gotten three free trials, like, all right, now I have a book business to pay and maybe buy your free tracking spreadsheet or when, when they purchase or when they check out the tracking spreadsheet, the, the listing spreadsheet, tip you five bucks, you know, um, they see it turn the page, buy you a beer. I think most people have good morals, maybe like 10% don't. Yeah. Know, so try Still trying to figure that one out. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But I've, I've seen that people that are the most hungry are the ones that are the most creative. And they like to mess with ethics sometimes. Not everybody does, but they get creative. Uh, and I love interacting with those because I love that enthusiasm. Uh, it's easy to get complacent and say, yep, you know, I'm making OK money. I'm happy. I've got all my needs taken care of. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You go, I'm set. Now what? And you start worrying about first world problems and, and where you want to go in life. So if you're if you're hungry and backed into a corner, that's when you're going to kick back and fight back. And I really look forward to seeing what's going to happen with, you know, it, it sucks for this community in the short term. But again, we're going to bounce back. The community is going to bounce back. The economy is going to bounce back. And if we en enter the other side or exit the other side of this in a recession, I can't wait to see what creative things pop up as people get their side hustles on. And, and use those skills. You know, we always talk about transferable skills. I don't care if you sell books. Sure, that's what our app focuses in on, but learn the skills of finding a buyer uh, or, you know, finding a product and connecting it with a buyer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're an Amazon seller. Learn those skills. Be transferable with it. You got a ton of stuff around your house right now that you're probably still sitting around. Uh, Scott, he's my favorite. Thanks, Louie. There's a ton of stuff in your house right now that I guarantee as you're sitting at home and, and you know pretending to work from home, um, shake things up. Go list as many things as you can. List stuff on eBay. We can still ship packages out even if we you know you don't want to drive everywhere to drop stuff off at the post office. Be creative, get hungry and and work hard and see what you can do. And that that's what excites me is to see what pops out on the other side of this and then get smarter. Put a plan in place. This is kind of hopefully once in a generation type thing, but put a plan in place. Be smarter with your money. Save up a little more. Give yourself a couple months worth of uh, cash in the bank if you're able to and and do that. You know, be smart. Um, and if you have cash, that allows you to then go in and buy, buy more stocks, buy up other items. Someone just mentioned, do you see where price is going nuts, nuts and ranks going up? You know, is there less, less uh, demand right now? eFlip might be a good option this day while the prices are low. Sure. The interesting thing with eFlip or buying textbooks to flip right now is there's a ton of students that were basically told, go home, we're going to finish up college online. A lot of them probably left textbooks behind. A lot of publishers that rely on schools that run on uh, trimesters or even quarters, they were relying on selling books and that volume is not going to be there necessarily. And there's going to be a lot of books left behind. There's a lot of opportunity um, ethically, if you start looking at what the colleges are doing, can you go in and buy up some of those books that maybe got left behind once this thing clears out? 
Um, so prices are going to be low. If you do have some free cash and you don't need it to put food on the table, there's going to be some opportunity to buy hard goods, stocks, et cetera. So get creative. And the more that you uh, have saved up for this rainy day that's finally here, the better off you're going to be. Someone's asking, do I have a baby yet? Not yet. Does that mean, is that like slang for girlfriend or? Uh, I think actual baby. That's what I thought. If you have a Miami baby, like I impregnate, <clears throat> impregnated someone. I mean, you've only been there two months. Yeah. We'll wait seven more and we'll see. <laughs> Let's see what, see what, see what pops out. I just watched Elliot on uh, Caleb's Instagram. A side note, last night on, I, I interviewed Frank from Little Owl. Yep. And uh, you know the Discover thing I do on Instagram? Like I pull up the Discover page and I'm like, what's your Discover page say? Like it reveals a lot about you. I made him do it on the live stream. Nice. And the first thing that came up was Elliot, you and Elliot. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, we uh, there's a little video of me being a, a poor dad, but we're I was teaching him to like – put Legos together and throw them in the air and catch them. And uh, he threw it up in the air, like big old smile on his face, trying to be like dad, threw it up and it like landed right on the, almost hit him in the eyeball. And it, I was like busting up laughing. Uh, so that, that's a fun one. You can check me out at the book flipper on Instagram. There's some fun uh, family videos there. If you psychologically want to know someone, what you do is you go on Instagram, I'll show you guys real quick, just turn my phone off airplane mode. Um, you go to their Instagram and you go to the, their discover page and you can just you instantly know their psychology like i'll show mine right there most of the time hey, you what you're what you're looking at mine's going to be mostly golf yeah it just shows what you're interested in right now it's a lot of butts so <laughs> it knows i'm quarantined up and it knows i'm vulnerable so it's top, of, top of mind baby <laughs> um but yeah sometimes it's like a bunch of hustle stuff like gary v but if you're interested in what someone's interested in Check out their Discover page on Instagram. All right, we're about to end this. I've been keeping you for an hour. Um, we've got one more question down here. Yeah, so we're, that's what we were just talking about. Is it an opportunity to buy up stuff cheaply? For sure. We don't know if the market's going to recover by the time fall semester rolls around. Again, yeah. if you have capital and can play with it, there's going to be a lot of opportunities and you need to figure out what's best for you. If uh, if money's tight and you need to be putting it toward toilet paper and food, then don't be don't be investing in assets right now. Be smart with it. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. I will say uh, regarding the inventory, we're restrictedinventory.com is offering this new service where if you email us, email us uh, like old inventory. No, don't email us. That's the keyword. Um, email us inventory hustle and we'll shoot you back instructions on how we, we can either sell your stranded inventory on consignment or make an offer for your older inventory. So if you have inventory over 365 days old, we can make an offer for that. And then for your stranded inventory, let's say you have 30 items stranded, we can look through there and be like, okay, 15 of these items we can sell on consignment and your projected profit is 153 bucks. So if you guys are interested in that, shoot me an email. Um, you can find the book flipper at the book Uh, he's got tons of information on that website. Uh, he's also got the book flipper community, the biggest book selling Facebook group. Maybe not. Breezy is probably bigger. Uh, it's more, it's the most niche book focused group. Yeah. Breezy's group is bigger, uh, but it's hard book selling groups. Um, and a uh, pro tip, we're going to be actually taking a lot of the content from book flipper university, rolling that into scout IQ and rolling that out for, free right. without IQ customers. So we're going to be putting our money where our mouth is. This is a time for you to be stocking up, improving your knowledge, improve your networking, improve your efficiency. And we're going to be putting our comment out for individuals as well. If you use the code coronavirus on the tracking <laughs> spreadsheet, uh, if you just count, <laughs> it does not. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate you coming on and uh, taking the time to talk with me and my audience for an hour. Any last words? Be safe, be well, and uh, don't do anything super reactionary. I almost sold a bunch of our uh, retirement portfolio this morning, and uh, Chris actually helped talk me out of it. But nice. don't make rash decisions. Wait 48 hours or, or more before you make big decisions. And uh, take care of those around you. Uh, if you have money, if you have goods, take care of those around you. We're all going to get through this. We're all human. We're all struggling. Um, and trying to get connection and uh, be smart about it. And we'll see you on the other side. Great. Much love. See you, buddy.